Hello guys, what's up? I'm Mohamed Fad, back with another video about programming. Welcome to the fifth episode of our machine learning course. In the previous episode, meaning the fourth one, we talked about how the gradient descent algorithm would look like for linear regression. If you haven't watched that or any of the previous episode, I suggest you go ahead and watch them. Today, we're going to be learning what would gradient descent look like if we had multiple features and a bunch of terms that you will need during uh, the linear regression stuff and uh, generally in machine learning when you're dealing with multiple features. So I'm going to explain those terms to you as well. So that's what we're going to learn today. And I think this episode is going to be a little bit shorter compared to the previous episode that we made. And without further ado, let's dive right into it. Alright guys, so as I said, in linear regression, we have a training set and many training examples. And every training set contains our input and our output. So it will look like this. We have X and Y. So this is one training example, right? So as you can see, we only have one uh, feature or in other words, input variable. And we have only one X. But in machine learning problems, we usually have many more input features. And if you have more inputs, our machine learning model is going to be more complicated, which means it's going to be better. So having multiple inputs looks like this. We have x0, x1, x2, and so on. We have all our input features over here. But the important thing is that we only have one uh, output for it. So no matter how many inputs we have, we only have one output. So now let me explain those terms that I talked about earlier. We have the term xj and we have the term xi. And as a result, we have the term xij. Now, what does these i and j mean? So xj means the input feature j. So x0 is this one over here. x1 is this one over here is this input feature over here. And remember that if we try to uh, draw the graph for the linear regression model, we will have axis for every single uh, input feature. So let's say we have two input features. Uh, one of the axes is going to be y. The other one is going to be x0 and x1. So this is how it's going to look. Then xi means the input features. Remember features, the set of features in the training example i. So let's say we have a data set that looks like this. We have our input features x's. So let's say it's 0, 2, 5, 10. These are just some random numbers. And we have our output for it, which is 100. We have another data which says with the input 0, 1, 6, and 7, we should have an output of 60, for example. Right now, how many training examples do we have in this training set? We have two training examples. So m in this example is going to be equal to two. Okay. Now, when I use this term over here, for example, if I say x one, this is going to be equal to zero, two, five, and ten. Remember that it's a set, right? We are referring to this one over here. So according to what we learned, x 2, 3 is referring to, guess what, number 7 over here. Why? Because we are saying in the training example 2, which refers to this one over here, this whole set, and training example, specifically training example 3, and as you know, it's indexed from 0, so this is number 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. Now remember that this 60 or 100 that we have are not uh, x's anymore. So if I say x2, uh, 4, we don't have such thing over here. This thing over here is just our y. And the y doesn't use j because we only have one output. That's why if we want to show any uh, output, we just say y i because we refer to the output of that training example. Okay, so now we know what i and j mean. Now let's talk about what m and n mean. We talked about m earlier in the previous episode and we said that it basically means how many training examples we have for a problem. 
For example, in this example that I wrote over here, we have two training examples. That's why M is equal to two, okay? And N is the number of input features. For this example that I wrote over here, our input features is gonna be three or four, if you wanna count zero as a feature or not. All right, so now let's talk about how the gradient descent algorithm would look like if we had multiple features. Well, it's easy. We use the terms that we just learned to tweak the formula a little bit so it works for multiple features. Let me write the formula over here. All right, so this is how the gradient descent formula would look like uh, for multiple features. As you can see, n is the number of features, and we say we loop through our features and change the theta and value for those features. Now, the important thing is that the gradient descent algorithm uses a loop. And in every single loop, it uses the derivative of the graph that the cost function makes against the theta values to go and find a better value for our theta so we get a lower cost function. Now, as I said, we have to do this loop uh, like multiple times, maybe hundreds or even thousands of times to get a really low uh, cost value. That's why I said the gradient descent algorithm uses a loop. Now, the really important thing is that in every single loop that we go ahead and find the derivatives, we update our theta values spontaneously, which means if you are doing the gradient descent algorithm for theta zero, we have to do it for all the thetas that we have until we are finished, we go ahead and take the derivative again. So that's really important. We have to update our theta values spontaneously. We can't just update theta zero, go ahead and take a derivative and then uh, work theta one, then go ahead and take the derivative. That's wrong. We have to take the derivative, work theta zero, theta one, all the input features that we have, all the theta values for those input features, and then we again go ahead and take the uh, derivative and do this whole process again. And as I said, it can go up to thousands of time, especially if you use a, a low learning rate, alpha. All right, so that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you learned the gradient descent algorithm for multiple features. And in the next videos, we're gonna learn about um, feature scaling and uh, basically debugging our gradient descent algorithm so we can run it smoothly. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. Leave a like and leave a comment. If you have any question or anything, I'll try my best to answer all of them. Have a nice day.